नमो तसा भगवत अर्हत सबुदस नमो तसा भगवत अर्हत सबुदस नमो तसा भगवत अर्हत सबुदस गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे we shall discuss about one of the kamaja rupas uh, which is known as jivitendriya so far we have uh, discussed about uh, in two lectures uh, previous uh, two lectures we discussed about uh, uh, kam uh, actually four lectures we discussed about uh, some important factors about kamaja rupas what are the kammas that uh, can produce kamaja rupas and then briefly about the kamaja rupas and the kamaja santatis and finally uh, uh, about what are how the kamaja rupas and uh, craving are interrelated how 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 there is what is the relationship between kamaja rupas and relevant craving uh, so it was clear to us that uh, the nature of kamaja rupas in a life depends upon the nature of the craving uh, that has been existing uh, in the mind stream of the previous life uh, has it been if it had been uh, suppressed if some some sort of craving has been suppressed certain types of kamaj rupas would not arise in the following life now uh, from today onwards we shall be moving into explain Uh, each and every kamaj rupa separately so in this lecture series i will be discussing about all the 28 types of rupas in detail so today our lecture would be about jivitendriya why do i start with the jivitendriya because it is the most uh, i would say the prominent kamaj rupa within the tradition it is found in every kamaj kalapa and it facility it, it causes our bodies to live to continue to live according to the tradition and uh, so therefore it it plays a huge role in our lives and when you do in do vipassana meditation it's another 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 ultimate reality that we need to focus upon in order to understand how the life is happening or continuing uh so we shall uh, so we shall start with the uh, the jivitendriya rupa which can which is translated as the life faculty and also sometimes as the vitality today's lecture we may discuss about the jivitendriya its na- characteristic its function and also some information about jivita navaka kalapa and jivita santati yeah these are the uh, topics that we are planning to discuss today so jivita jivitendriya rupa so how do we understand the brief explanation about a short explanation about jivitendriya would be the rupa that facilitates or which supports the continuation of the kamaja santati kamaja santati santati is a generation of rupas and these uh, generations keep on happening continue to happen and that continuation is facilitated by this special rupa called jivitendriya there are four types of santatis mainly santatis of chitta jarupas utu jarupas ahara jarupas and also kamaj rupas but only kamaj santatis generations of kamaj rupas needs the support of jivitendriya in order to continue this is a vital factor in order to understand what the jivitendriya is now for that we should look into the different types of santatis now i'll i'll draw the other santatis in yellow color for instance if this is the santati of utuj rupas kalapas arise and pass away in generations 
Now, chitta ja santatis are produced by chittas in mind processes. For example, bhavanga chittas, then avajjana, javana in mind or processes, for instance. Then, tadalambana. And again, falls into bhavanga. Now, in this process, a rupas which are produced by each and every viti chitta and their generation is called viti chitta ja santati. So they may last for a few more mind moments and at the end they may end. They may end. So these santatis start at a certain time and they end at a certain time. So we can see that their generation greatly depends upon their cause. What are the what is the cause of these rupas? Those are the viti chittas. Those are the viti chittas. So as long as the viti chittas keep on happening, that santati may last. But as a, as a phenomenon of the consciousness, viti chitta, the mind processes would not last forever. So there are certain limitations. So after they have finished, sooner. The viti processes, the chitta, uh, viti chitta, chittaja processes, uh, chittaja santatis would terminate, would end up. Then, if you look into the uh, utuja santatis, this is the tejo datu, produces utuja rupas. This is chittaja santati. This chedo datu produces utuja rupas and similar sort of Tejo Dhatu. For example, if you move in, even though these are different Rupa, but they are similar. Similar, if I take this is uh, consider about the Tejo Dhatu in these Kalapas, not the Kalapa itself, the Tejo Dhatu. They may, as long as similar Tejo is present, they, these processes, these processes, would last. For instance, if you enter into a air-conditioned room and if you come out from it, you enter into it and you come out from it, what happens? The Utuja process that is produced by this Tejo may last for some time and they may also end. So this is when they started but they end. So it shows that when the cause is not prevailing anymore, the generation cannot continue. So it's, it's same for the Utuja Santati. Utuja Santati. So Achitaja Santati and Utuja Santati both last as long as their cause is remaining. The same should be applied, same should be said with regard to uh, Aharaja Santatis. For instance, now if this is the uh, Aharaja, Ahara Rupa, after we, has, we have taken some meal, it may, uh, if this is the oja, this is the oja, it produces aharaja rupas, aharaja rupas. And then after the process has ended, after the, after similar, Ahara Ojas have ended, what happens? Their process, process ends. Their process ends. This is Ahara Jasantati. A similarity of these Santatis is they last as long as their causes are there. Here, uh, my pro, mind, uh, with the consciousness in mind processes, here similar type of Tejo Dhatu in the Aharaja Santatis, similar uh, or the f or we can say uh, the food. Now, if you if you have taken a certain partake partake a meal, partake a meal, uh, the Oja of that meal we can consider as uh, similar Oja. So. 
after that, after a few days that Oja has exhausted, it is not capable of producing Aharaja Santatis. So the similarity is these Santatis last, can last only while their cause is prevailing. But with regard to Kamajarupas, the phenomenon is different. With regard to Kamajarupa, phenomenon is a bit different. We consider now this is the mind stream of a being. It has died, death. Consider this is the moment that he has done the karma. So this karma, after it has been done, a certain kind of energy remains. We call karma sati. Right? It associates the five aggregates or the mind stream. Now this karma sati, this karma has already vanished. It's not more, no more there as an ultimate reality. It's no more there as an ultimate reality. A certain kind of potency remains within the mind stream. So this potency causes for the resultant mentalities and resultant matter to arise. We discuss about these terms. Vipaka, Chitta, Cheta, Sikas and Kamajarupas. Resultant mentalities, resultant matter. Now our focus is at resultant matter. This potency is capable of producing Kamaja Rupas. Now we shall uh, focus only at the Kamaja Rupas, not at the mentalities. Now Kamaja Rupas start from the beginning of the life and it would end up at one moment that is when the Kama Sati is also not producing, is not supporting anymore. Now the thing is, the cause in the previous two, the previous three examples, the cause for the continuation of the result, that is the satati, that is the generation, the cause has to be there. The cause was all, always there with it, except in the last case, because after the cause has produced it, it may last for a few moments than the cause, because it has already arisen. But the, the generation would not continue if the cause is not supporting anywhere, anymore. It is not no more there. But in case of the Kamajarupas, the cause has already long been long passed away. Maybe this Kama was done in the previous life or many lives ago. Many lives ago. But still, the process continues. The process continues. So in the previous three cases, we can see the reason for the continuation of the processes is the re reason why new new rupas arose arise in this process is because the cause is constantly supporting the support of the cause is being given to the process if you take this as a process the process is always backed up by the cause but in this case cause is no more there is a potency but you have to consider the cause has already vanished because it's not more there as a, re in, as a reality, ultimate reality. But still the mind, pro this, the generation continues. Still the generation continues. Why is that? Why it is capable of this continuation? According to the tradition, it's because of a special rupa. That rupa, that special rupa is considered as the Jivitindriya. or it's also called Jivita, sometimes as Ayu. Mm -hmm. There's a special Rupa in these Kalapas, which facilitates the continuation of the generation at the absence of its cause. I'll repeat again, the Kamaja generation would prevail, would continue to exist as a generation even when their cause is absent, is no more. Why is that? Because it is being given support or it is being supported by a special rupa which is called Jivitindriya. That rupa exists within this process, in the process. It's a very strange thing. So when we go deeply analyze this, sometimes it may seem as bizarre but still that is how the tradition explains. So the difference is, 
in Kamaja processes, Kamaja Santatis, the cause is no more. The continuation, the mind process, the, the, though the potency is supporting, it's true that the potency is supporting, but not as an ultimate reality. So the Kamaja Rupa process would continue due to the support given by a special Rupa which happens within the process, within the Kalapas, together with the Kalapas in the process. If this life, if this Rupa is disturbed, even though the potency is still supporting, if this Rupa is disturbed, the process would end up, the process would end up. Therefore, the explanation of Jivitendriya is the Rupa that facilitates the continuation of Kammaja Santatis. Continuation of Kammaja Santatis. How does this do this? How does this Rupa do this, perform this function? How does it do this? It's according to the Paramatta Deepani, this is the, if we zoom out, zoom in the uh, Kamaja process. Jivitendriya exists within the Kalapas. This Jivitendriya strengthens its coexisting Rupa during its persisting moment, during the Titi moment. Jivitendriya strengthens the existing, coexisting Rupa. As a result, as a result, shall erase them for example. Now, the, the, now this Rupa is produced by past Kamma. I, I, shall, I shall call it Kamma Sati. The entire Rupa is produced by Kamma Sati. Including the Jivitindriya, that is the key point here. Even including the Jivitindriya was produced by this force. But this Jivitindriya supports the remaining Rupa in the Kalapa. So they become stronger. They get strengthened. As a result, this cluster becomes a cause, becomes a very vital cause for the arising of new Kammaja Kalapas being strengthened. Now, these, as this, the level of this group, the strength of this Kalapa increases due to the support given by the Jivitendriya, it is capable of sustaining the generation. So what does this imply? The Kamma force itself is not capable of continuing this process. That's why it is implicitly what it, is, what it means. The Kamma Sati, the potency, is not capable of continuing the uh, Rupa process alone. It needs some extra support. That support is given by the Kalapa. The, G, the, the Kamaja Kalapa, the previous Kamaja Kalapa strengthens, this, uh, Kamaja Kalapa supports the following Kamaja Kalapa. But that ability of the Kamaja, that ability to support the following Kamaja Kalapas is given by this special Rupa which arises together with it. So as a result, Jivitendriya in each Kamaja Kalapa strengthens its coexisting Rupas. So due to being strengthened by Jivitendriya, these Rupas are able to support causes the generation to continue. So this is how Jivitendriya is causing the continuation of the Kamaja Kalapas by strengthening its associates, is associating uh, uh, rupas. In Pali, if such a generation happens to continue, such a generation happens to continue, especially I'm talking about the rupas, even at the absence, even at the absence of, of its major cause, if rupas happen to continue at the absence of its major cause due to some sort of special support or special rupa within the within the clusters so that process that process that continuation continuation of that process is said to be jivati 
it means to live the lives said to be living otherwise is said to be living jivati uh, the the definition is if a material process continues to happen even at the absence of his major cause and being supported by a special rupa that continuation is said to be jivati and the rupa which facilitates this jivati jivana facilitates this living is called jivita jivati is a verb jivita is a noun jivita is the rupa that this facilitates or this causes this ji, ji, the act of living and that is the jivita indriya that is the rupa that we are discussing today this jivita is also called jivita indriya because it has the function of a indriya indriya means it is predominant in this act of which act of this living of this living it is predominant in the act of living the same can be seen in the mind process same can be seen in the mind process the kam has already vanished in the which has been done in the past life it gives rebirth but the mind process still keeps on continuing because each and every bhavanga chitta patisandhi and chuti even contains jivitindriya it strengthens the coexisting mentalities as a result the process happens to continue so what does this implies even for the mind mind process the kama itself cannot sustain the generation alone kama kama alone cannot sustain the generation it needs some support that support from the generation is given by jivitindriya so there is a mental jivitindriya which supports the continuation of the mind stream at the same time there is a physical jivitindriya which continues the uh, uh, mind uh, the continuation the rupa process so the main function of jivitindriya is to make us to live living means to continue without getting terminated the the act of living how do we define act of living is to continue without stopping so then if a mind process or a material process happens to continue without ending we call it still living it's living so the mind process happens to live throughout the sansara as a one mind stream but the rupa processes in uh, are defined by confined from life to life but throughout the life they happen to live we call they happen to live so this is how uh, we explain jivitindriya jivitindriya is the rupa this that facilitates the continuation of kamaja santatis now we shall move on to uh, uh, 2.193 2.193 so how this jivitindriya suppose now it's also important to see that jivitindriya itself is been supported by the coexisting rupas while it is giving a support to others so i shall read this paragraph it is important to know how jivitindriya exists within a kamaja kalapa strengthening the coexisting rupas and protecting the kamaja rupa generations so please underline these two terms strengthening the coexisting rupas it strengthens this is the strengthening and protecting protecting the generation protecting means not letting it to stop ec protecting ting protecting the generation it strengthens the coexisting rupa and protects the generation all the rupas in a kamaja kalapa are produced by a past kamma which is not no more existing is not existing anymore kamma is the major cause of kamaja rupas at the same time rupas in a kalapa do get the support of coexisting rupas as well so we know the mutual support is is there 
Within a kalapa, Jivitindriya depends upon four great elements. Patavi acts as a surface. We already discussed about this. Tejo protects and strengthens. There is another strengthening given by Tejo, which is different to that of uh, uh, Jivitindriya. Then, it, by facilitating the necessary heat, necessary heat or coldness, we can call. Apo binds it without letting it to scatter in the space. And Vayu holds it without letting it to shrink uh, or fall down to its center. We know that it, it becomes, it falls down. We, we had a special word for that, I forgot. Um, collapse, it doesn't collapse, okay. Other than the four great elements, Oja, the Ahara Rupa we have already discussed, Oja, in a Kamaja Kalapa, nourishes the Jivitendriya, it nourishes. So, there are two more supports given, support by the Tejo Datu and also the support by the Oja. Besides that, while being thus supported by other Rupas, the Jivitendriya strengthens its associate Rupas. Jivitendriya strengthens its associate Rupas. Thank you. Uh, yeah. While being thus supported by other Rupas, the Jivitendriya strengthens its associate Rupas. So it gets the support from the other four elements, five elements actually, four great elements and the Oja. The same time, it supports the remaining all the Mahabhutas as well. Due to this strengthening, following Kamajurupas of that Santani arise being strong. So now, due to this strengthening, we it is capable of bringing this. It's, it's it, these following Rupas are also getting strengthened. So, for instance, if this is the level that is necessary for the uh, rupas to happen. It seems like the Kamma is capable of producing the first Jivitindriyas at that level, but for the following Jivitindriyas to happen, to come into that level, it's not only Kamma that needs, that needs to support, Kamma is producing them, but it needs the support of the previous Kalap as well. So this doesn't apply to the first rupa, if you think logically. So that is how the, uh, it seems that's how the tradition explains. So for this Kalapa to come into that level, to that level of existing or to exist, it not only needs the support of karma, but also it needs, needs the support of the previously arisen Kamaja Kalapa. That ability, how did that ability, how did that Kalapa get this ability? It's because of the strengthening done by the Jivitendriya. So in the end, Jivitendriya facilitates, facilitates this continuation. Hmm. So one can ask a very good question, what about the first Kalapa? I am not able to an answer to that because uh, it seems like the Kamma is capable of producing the initial process, initial Kalapas. But for the continuation, it needs another support, that is the Jivitendriya. Hmm. So due to the strengthening following Kamaja Rupas of that Santati arise being strong, as a result Kamaja Santati prevails as long as the life remains even at the absence of his major cause, that is to say the past karma. In other words, Jivitindriya Rupa protects the Kamaja Santati without letting it to stop. So it does, does two functions, it strengthens the coexisting Rupas, at the same time it, strength, it, cause, it protects the generation protects the generation because this rupa is supporting the other rupa so forth it keeps on continuing. Why the previous rupas are capable of supporting the following kalapas is because of the strengthening given by the Jivitendriya. Then uh, but if you go into the commentaries, now for example, this is how the Paramatha Deepani explains this. As the protection of the generation of Kamaja Rupas happened due to strengthening, uh, but due to strengthening the associated Rupas in a Rupa Kalapa, it is mentioned in commentary that Kamaja Rupas protect the coexisting corporeal realities. Now, commentary says it protects the, the coexisting realities. It protects the coexisting realities. One of our Lady Sayadaw is strongly suggesting if a reality has already happened due to a major cause, it's a very important factor. Now, there are five major causes for all the conditioned realities according to Theravada tradition. So, there are four major four major causes for Rupa, Kamma, Chitta, Uttu and Ahara. And for Chitta, is the previous consciousness. So, previous mind, uh, we call Chittupada, hmm? consciousness and mental factors. So, if a reality has already happened, 
due to a major cause. Major cause always has to be apart from that cluster. So always realities arise in clusters. The major cause cannot exist within the cluster because it is not possible. The, cluster, the major cause has to be something apart, something different from the cluster. It has to be apart from that cluster. Then, uh, uh, so after it has, it has arisen, according to Seado, Lady Seado, it's not necessary, major cause is not necessary for the exi momentary existence of that reality. It's not necessary for the momentary existence. Then you may get confused with what I said in the beginning. I said uh, that Chittaja, Utuja and Aharja Kalapas, the generation needs the major cause to continue. That is for the generation. We are not talking about the momentary existence. For the generation to continue, the major support of the major cause is necessary because generation means arising of new, new Kalapas. So the major cause or similar cause has to be there. But with regard to the momentary existence, after it has arisen, for its, con for its decaying and passing away, there is no necessity of a major cause. There is no necessity of a major cause. So even the major cause is no more, it won't, it won't just end without completing its momentary existence. What Sado is suggesting is, even the Jivitindriya is not there, if Kama has produced it, as it happens with the first, first Kalapa, if Kama produces it, uh, it doesn't need a Jivitindriya for its existence. If something has arisen, it's a natural cause that it would decay and pass away. There's no way that it could, it could end up in between its momentary lifespan. That's the law of the phenomenon. It's, it's a phenomenon. It's a law. So what the Jivitindriya is doing, it facilitates the con it con facilitates or it it causes for the continuation or it supports the continuation of the generation. It's not supporting the momentary existence of the kalapa. Therefore, even the commentary suggests says that it protects the coexisting rupa. Sado is suggesting get the meaning, get the try to understand the meaning. He's not saying the commentary is wrong. He's saying you have to understand the meaning of the commentary as the Jivita Indriya supports the coexisting rupa as a result, it protects not the coexisting rupa, protects the generation. You don't need the Jivita Indriya to protect the coexisting rupa according. The protection is needed, necessary for the continuation of the generation. So I shall read that paragraph again as the protection of the generation of Kamaj Rupas happened due to the strengthening the associating Rupas in a Rupa Kalapa. It is mentioned in the commentaries that Kamaj Rupas protects the coexisting corporeality, corporeal reality. However, what is actually what it actually protects is the generation of Kamaj Rupas. Kamaj, that is to say Kamaj Santati. The reason is there is no necessity of an extra support for persisting of a reality, for the titi moment of a reality. There is a mutual support because they cannot exist without that. But they all been, after they have been brought into the existence as a mutual group unit, they would still exist. You don't need any extra sort of support for that. That is a mutual support that is gained. So what Jivitindriya is doing is support, giving an extra support. That is a strengthening. For what? Is it for the con momentary existence of the Kalapa? No. It is for the continuation of the generation. The reality that has arisen will surely remain during its entire lifespan under the law of existence. So momentary existence is, depends on the arising. If something has arisen, it would surely decay and pass away. You don't need any support or cause for that. So that is the idea of Venerable Lady Sadhu, you can look into that Pali paragraph, which is a very, very uh, uh, vital or imperative philosophical fundamental of the Theravada tradition. If you keep on thinking on this, this is a very important factor. After a reality or a cluster of reality has arisen due to a major cause, it doesn't, it doesn't need the support of that cause anymore for its momentary existence. That's what the Seado is suggesting. It's a very uh, logical, uh, important uh, factor. Then the question can come, what about the mutual support that is given by the coexisting realities? Because they all have been brought into existence. They've all been brought into the existence. 
so during their existence yes they are supporting each other even their their mutuality was necessary but the major cause was something apart from the cluster a cluster cannot arise due to a, due to that cluster there should be some major cause of arising. So the major cause, there are only five major causes. For the rupas, kamma, chitta, utu and ahara, for the mind moments, the mental clusters, the previous mental cluster or chittupada is the major cause. And we can also add uh, kamma for the uh, vipaka chittas as well. So this is uh, another uh, point that I would like to emphasize. Then later, uh, Rukhani Chandravela Mahatera. I think this was found in another book as well, in a Pali commentary, sub-commentary. Jeevit Indriya protects its coexisting Kamaj Rupas like a sailor who sails a ship depending upon the latter. A sailor sails the ship depending on the ship. So likewise, Jeevit Indriya supports or strengthens the Rupas while being supported by the coexisting Rupas. This act of protecting is called Anupalana. Anupalana of Jeevit Indriya. How this Anupalana happens? By protecting, by strengthening its coexisting realities and as a result sustaining the generation. So this is how the Anupalana happens as Lady Sado explains. And it makes sense. That's why I took that approach. That's how it, it can be explained. And there, otherwise, there will be a lot of questions to ask. If, if the uh, Jeevit Indriya is protecting the coexisting Rupas, what is the necessity? Of this, so according to Lady Sado, who, has, who is a wonderful scholar, Buddhist scholar, he says that Jivit Indriya is strengthening the coexisting rupa. As a result, the generation continues. This act is called Anupalana. Then we move on to the next paragraph. How Jivit Indriya has been explained by the Buddha, but not with the word Jivit Indriya. It is found in Dhamma Sangani, the word Jivit Indriya, but in sutras we normally find the word Aju. Ayu. Ayu is normally the life, lifespan we can call, or life. In Sangyutta Nikaya, Buddha mentioned there are three factors, three vital factors for, the, for living. Ayu, Usma, Vinyana. Ayu, Usma, Vinyana. Vinyana here means Bhavanga consciousness. Bhavanga, Chitta and Chetasikas. Usma refers to Kamaja Tejo, a Tejo Datu, heat produced by Kama. Past Kama. It is the heat that protects our body, not letting it rotten, get rotten. Ayu is the Jeevita Indriya. Jeevita Indriya Rupa. Buddha mentioned the Gata in the Sangyutta Nikaya mentioning Ayu Usmacha Vinyanang Yada Kayang Jahantimang. So when these three elements give up the body, like uh, abandons the body, apavidho tadaseti, then the body lies there, cast away, parabattang achetana, being food, parabattang achetana, being food to other animals. So it means worms and other animals would start to eat this body. Hmm. Yeah, then we move on to Jivita Navaka Kalapa. Jivita Navaka Kalapa, we talked about this. Briefly, Jivita Navaka Kalapa and Jivita Santati. Jivita Navaka Kalapa are the cluster of Kamaja, uh, cluster of Kamaja Kalapas that contains eight Avinibhoga Rupas and Jivita Indriya only. Eight Avinibhoga and Jivita Indriya. So there are nine Rupas in that cluster. If you remember, there were nine types of Kamaja Kalapas, nine types of Kamaja Kalapas, which were like, uh, which were Chakku Dasaka Kalapa, Sota Dasaka Kalapa, 
clusters of tens that contain chakku sota and gana and all these sens sensitivities but the last kalapa was named jivita navaka jivita navaka means it contains nine rupas it's constituted with nine rupas that uh, that is to say eight avini boga patavi apo tejo vayo vanna ganda rasa oja and jivitindriya these are called jivita navaka kalapa the the generation of these these jivita navaka kalapas are called jivita santati jivita santati so jivita santati uh, or jivita navaka kalapa jivita santati can be found in uh, various manners within the body a very now uh, if you look into the visuddhi magga visuddhi magga we have given information about four types of tejo and six types of vayu six types of vayu these tejo and vayu except the uh, vayu uh, asasa pasasa breathing yeah the air element that is used for breathing all the 11 uh, sorry nine four tejo four types of tejo and five types of vayu contains kamaja kalapas Kamaja Kalapas. They have the Jivita Navaka. They contain Jivita Navaka. So we have to take here 5, uh, 6 minus 1, Anapana, Asasa Pasasa. So all these 9 material. Here 9 means now Buddha has uh, divided the body into 20, body, 20 um, hard parts. 12 liquid parts and four heat uh, uh, qualities, heat, heat parts, and then uh, five abandoned with vayu. Hmm? We, we, we may be discussing them when we ever come, whenever we come to the uh, vipassana practice. Uh, so these, they all contain jivita navaka rupa and they exist in santati. So jivita santati and jivita navaka kalapas are found there. Among them, there is a special rupa called Pachakagi. This is also called Paripachaka Tejo. Yeah, Paripachaka Tejo, if my memory was correct. Uh, this is the heat that is used in digestion. digestion. in the tradition digestion mainly happens due to the heat element we can find this aspect in one sutta especially in the padanangya sutta of anguttara nikaya pancha padanangya sutta of anguttara nikaya pancha padanangya sutta Buddha mentions five factors that are necessary for the develop, spiritual development of a yogi. One is having a healthier body, healthy body. The healthy body has been defined by the Buddha as having a stomach which has proper digestion, which, which gives proper, proper digestion. So digestion is defined by, by the nature of the heat, nature of the tejo which involves in this digestion. If this Tejo is too cool, it means not hot enough, the food would digest slowly and this can cause lots of troubles. If that heat is too hot, the food would be digest quickly and this also causes some problems. If one should have an even uh, heat, uh, the, the suitable heat for, for a very uh, proper type of digestion. So this was referred as Samave Pakini Gahani. Samave Pakini Gahani, having a stomach. Stomach means the the part that is involved in digestion. Uh, Samave Pakini uh, Gahani, having a, a stomach with proper heat, proper heat, suitable heat adequate enough 
for proper digestion. So on, then one, so according to Buddha, this plays a vital role in one's health. Plays a vital role in one's health. This heat, the commentary extends. If that heat, if that heat is too much, maybe some traditions may be using certain terms for this heat. I think in Chinese tradition, you have something called qi. Maybe it's also related to this. I'm not sure about that. But uh, when you, when, when, when they, according to the Lady example, he says that, it, that that heat is spread all over the body. We will come to that point. The commentary states, now Buddha says, you need to have a proper even digestion and for that, a proper sort of Tejo Dhatu. Nati Unhaya, Nati Sitaya. Not too cold, not too hot. The commentary extends this and explains. If the heat element involves in, involved in a digestion is too cold, the person is intolerant of cold. It's difficult for him to bear the cold, coldness. If that heat is too much, he is not able to tolerate heat, the heat con weather conditions. So he prefers cold conditions, cool weather. A person who has a, a cool di uh, heat element, like not hot enough, he prefers hot weather conditions. So opposite is happening. So they suggest that it's, he's, he's afraid of heat. A person who has a too much hot digestion is afraid, doesn't like the heat. If that is too much, uh, too, too cool, uh, not hot enough, he doesn't prefer coldness. Then uh, the sub-commentary suggests that, yeah, for example, if we draw it, maybe it's useful for some. Uh, if it's too much, if this archakagi, too cold, then cannot tolerate coldness, cold cannot connect the cold and if it is too hot the person cannot bear heat then and also as a result if it is too cold what happens the digestion is slow this quotes causes for vata bada vata bada means Sickness caused by the air element. According to Ayurveda, there are three main elements in the body. The air element, bile, and the phlegm. Uh, if the digestion is too slow, this causes, because the food would last for a long period in the stomach, causing certain gases to happen. Causing certain gases to happen. Then this would uh, cause for uh, co uh, sickness caused by uh, yeah, if it is too hot, he cannot tolerate the heat at the same time, digestion is too fast, it's too fast. So as a result, the bile starts to get activated. So it's called Pitta Bada. Pitta Bada means sickness caused by the, caused by bile. Therefore, this Pachakagi. Pachakagi, now uh, we mentioned about four types of Tejo and five, I would say, Vayo, excluding the Anapana, Asasa Pasasa. Out of the three, one Tejo only contains Jivita Namaka. This is this Pachakagi, Paripachaka Tejo. So this paripachaka tejo or the pachakagi, which is that is involved in uh, digestion, uh, is made out of only with jivita navaka kalapas. Now, now according to this sutta and the uh, commentarial explanation, the Theravadians hold the opinion that jivita navaka kalapas plays a huge, vital role in the healthiness of a person, health of a person. Then if you move on to the next paragraph, based on above information, information Paramatta Jeepani mentions that Jeevitendriya Kalapas are not 
uh, are involved in protecting the entire body. It's not only about the Kambaja Kalap. Now we mentioned previously we mentioned Jivit Indriya is responsible for the continuation of the Kambaja Santati. But according to this information, it's clear it's not only protecting the Kambaja generation, it is also involved in protecting the entire body. Not only Kambaja Kalapas, but the entire rupas of, a, of animate bodies. According to it, the support of Jivita Indriya is given not only to Kambaja Rupas, but also to all rupas in animate bodies. All rupas of animate bodies. Then the Seado explains further. Now think about this the man is a human. This is a stomach area, for example. This contains a sort of heat. Tejo Datu. This is considered to be Jivita Navaka Kalapa. Its heat element is abandoned, but it's made out of Jivita Navaka Kalapa. Those Jivita Navaka Kalapas has excessive heat. According to Seado, this heat starts from the stomach and it spreads all over the body. It can be found in the entire body, the entire body. So this heat is also referred as Kamaja Tejo. Kamada Tejo. It happens from the stomach and spreads all around the body. But it doesn't mean that Kamaja Tejo is all only starting from the stomach. It, it is also found as when we get uh, when we get sick and so forth, still that heat is found. But what Seado is telling, the main Kamaja Tejo, which protects the body, is an outcome of this uh, Tejo inside our stomach, which is constituted with Jivita Navaka Kalapas. Jivita Navaka Kalapas. So, if we look into that, uh, the previous explanation given by the Buddha, he mentions three reasons ayu jivitindriya usma kamaja tejo and vinyana bhavanga so this is the heat element kamaja tejo that kamaja tejo is the tejo found in jivita navaka kalapas so jivita navaka kalapas contains two vital elements that are necessary for the health or the protection of the entire body. This is Kamaja Tejo and Jivitindriya. Every Kamaja Kalapa has a Tejo and it's also involved in protecting the body and in, in Jivitindriya in a, every Kamaja Kalapa is also involved in supporting the body. That's a factor but the main prominent support is given by these Jivita, this Tejo and Jivita Indriya in Jivita Navaka Kalapas which originates from the stomach and spreads all around the body all around the body so maybe it's a little bit similar to some sort of uh, heat that is explained in some other cultures uh, this is how the Theravadians explain it uh, and also we should keep in mind there were five Vayo, which have Jivita Indriya, Jivita Navakala, but it's not only considered Jivita, uh, the five Vayos also have Uttuja Chittaja Kalapas as well, even the remaining three Tejos, except the Pachakagi. So, therefore, we have to keep in mind Jivita Indriya is found in abandoned Kamaja Vayo as well, uh, in the, uh, in Jivita, with G, as Jivita Navakalapas, and Jivita Indriya found in Kamaja Santatis are also involved in protecting the body. So how it is found in Kamaja Vayo, you can read it in the uh, footnotes I have given, taken from the Paramatta Deepani. Then finally, uh, in the Theravada literature, this Jivita Navaka Kalapa has been emphasized, clearly emphasized in Brahma body, the bodies of Brahmas, for two reasons, for two reasons, because Brahma bodies are not nourished by food, they don't get the nourishment because Oja is not active there. According to Mulatika, Oja is not existing there. But according to commentaries, Oja is not, not supporting the body. Then they also lack the Kaya Dasaka Kalapas, the Kalapas which contains the bodily sensi body sensitivity. 
because body sensitivity also has jivitindriya. Each and every kamaja kalapa has jivitindriya. But in our bodies, that jivitindriya is found in body uh, kaya dasaka kalapas. As the brahmas doesn't have the kaya dasaka kalapa, instead they have jivita navaka. So in the same place that we have kaya dasaka kalapa, they, they are kalapas lack the body sensitivity so they have nine rupa so it's called jivita navaka so jivita navaka uh, protects the entire entire is spread out, spread all over their body in the place where we have kaida so kalapas and also uh, jivita indriya is is ha have doing some sort of very important role in their bodies because even they don't have ocha ocha is not supporting them uh, the brahma bodies and uh, 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 but Jivita Indriya, Jivita Navakalapa has been clearly explained in Visuddhi Magga to exist in our bodies as well and it does a huge role in protecting our life. According to Buddhism, trees do not have life faculty. The greenery nature is maintained by the support of Uttujarupa. So its living nature is given to it by Uttujarupas. Then come and can ask the question, why do we need Kamaja, Kamaja uh, Jivita Indriya? So it's a very special case because we have a very huge distinction between living and non-living in Buddhism. Trees are not living things. Animals and humans and uh, invisible beings like Devas and Brahmas do live. And they are affected, they are produced by Karma. So Karma performs its function. Also, uh, to, in order for the Karma to sustain this life, it needs a special rupa material and mental element which is called jivita indriya we were talking about the material element today and this has been referred can be referred as vitality so the idea of vitality has been existing in the in, uh, in ancient, among ancient philosophies philosophers for a longer period but the modern science the biology completely dismisses this idea saying that uh, vitality was either something that was given by the god or either something that was given by the karma, whatever it is, there was a, some sort of mysterious element which causes, which differentiated our bodies from inanimate bodies. A table would also contain the four great elements uh, as well as our bodies, but that table is not living, our bodies are living, the difference lays in the vitality. You can see this term in vitality. So this was referred as a sort of a mysterious element. Uh, my knowledge, even from correct Aristotle or ancient philosophers, discuss about this idea. The modern biology says, no, we don't need a such type of extra element to explain the living nature of organism. That's what they're saying. Without a vitality, uh, a strange phenomenon, a uh, mysterious element, we can explain this uh, existence but Buddhism relies upon karma which cannot be verified with science uh, so karma affects the body and through it also needs the support of a vitality or a jivitindriya rupa which is produced by the karma itself so it has to be understood as something which makes our bodies or lives to live and makes our bodies healthier and this shows the existence of Jivita Indriya shows how fragile our life is. E even the Kamma is still has the capacity to give the, continue the life. If the Jivita Indriya is interrupted by whatever means, even by, so sometimes we, we most of the cases we disturb the Utuja Santatis and it distorts the equilibrium and the Jivita Santati would, uh, the Kamaja Santatis was collapse, would collapse. So when the Kamaja Santatis collapse, Jivita Indriya is no more, so the body cannot sustain anymore. So Jivita Indriya is a vital factor and it shows that our, our life is very fragile. It depends on many other many reasons. Kamma is one reason, Jivita Indriya is another reason, food is another reason, our maintenance of our postures is another reason. So there are many reasons for us to, uh, and even the breathing is another reason. So there are many causes for the continuation of life. It's not one thing, it's not a self that can sustain by itself. It is, the life is something, a process which is supported by many causes. Jivita Indriya plays a huge role. And it shows that this is not a self. Our Nama Rupa process is not a self. It's a non-self process going on. So it would help you to think about uh, the Vipassana aspect as well. I conclude the lecture next week would be the last week for this semester. Uh, I shall move on to explain Bhava Rupas.
I'll, I shall take two days to explain it and then we conclude the lectures for this semester and start starting June. Yeah. So I conclude the lecture and give, open the forum for the Q&A session. Thank you, Pandey Saad, Saad, Saad. So hello everyone, as usual, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand and you put your question in the chat box. Um, hi, Pandey. Yes. Um, I have a... Uh, <laughs> so, so you said that according to Lady Sayadaw, then uh, if the main cause is there, then there is, I mean, in terms of the Kamajarupa, then there is no need for the Jivita uh, Rupa. If it is only to support the coexisting Rupa, right? But and then, can we think of it like, you know, so Kama is not there anymore, so only the Sati gave rise to the Kamaja Rupa. But then we know that the lifespan of the Rupa is kind of long relative to the Chitta. So does that mean that it needs something to prolong the life of everything in the Kalapa? And that factor is the Chihuita Rupa? Uh because now the lifespan of the rupa has been governed by a different phenomenon it's it's the phenomenon of rupa so each and every rupa according to the commentaries whether it's kamaja chittaja utujo aharaja has a 17 lifespan so then the same uh, the chittaja rupa is also which is produced by mentality which also has a 17 lifespan i think your question is about if because they are they don't have that uh, the major cause kamaja rupas need uh, extra support to, to live the 17 mind moments, right? Is it, is it the yes. Jivita Indriya? Uh, that is not how it has been explained. Uh, according to what uh, my understanding is that every, each and every Rupa has a nature to live, has an has a, has a ability to live for 17 mind moments. So I, I'll read out what the Lady Sayadu says in footnote number 8. Apicha kanat titi nama sabhava siddhayeva. So the momentary existence the, the, this lifespan, momentary lifespan, is sabhava siddha, has, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a natural occurrence. It, has, it is happening naturally. It's a law. Nahi upanna dhamma pache ve kallena attano kanesu paripunnang attatva antarava bijantiti atti. So any reality that has a reason would not pass away in between without completing it life, its lifespan uh, due to the lack of causes. Nacha pachyadi matthena atre katarang tittan titi atti. Even though someone gives extra support, atre kapachya, it is not going to last longer. So, according to him, the momentary lifespan is something already determined. So, if something arises, if a rupa arises, it would last for 17 mind moments. If a chitta arises, it lasts for just for one mind moment. Tasma, therefore, kanat titiyang upat thambaya mana api ahara dayo anupalne mananj jivitang pacha balavarupa santati pavati athaya eva upat thambeti palinti. So, therefore, this ahara and jivita which supports the coexisting rupas during the persisting titi moment are given this support. For pacha balava rupa santati pavati athaya, for the continuation of the generation of rupas, which are going to happen later, so it's supporting the generation. Na kanatiti pavati ati, not for the momentary existence. Etavata sabbe sampi kanatiti nama dharmana janakayatta va jivitattaya va nahotiti siddha. Therefore, the kanatiti, the momentary existence, is not uh, done by the major cause or jivitindriya. Yadi pane, then yadi pane tang, santati pavati meva sandhaya vuttang siya, evan sati yujje yati. So if it is talking about santati pavati, it means about the generation, continuation of the generation, then it makes sense. Attakata yampi. Sante picha anupalan lakkana dimhi vidane atikane yevatang 
ते धम्मे पालेती दि वचनं पालेती ति आदि वचनं यता संतति ति लभति तथा विचारित्वा गहेतब सो so, बाबा द अटकता सेज इट्स प्रोटेक्ट्स द कोएक्जिस्टिंग रूपस व्हाइल इट इज एक्जिस्टिंग सो व्हाट द शैडो इज टेलिंग गेट द मीनिंग एज इट फिट्स टू द generation not for the momentary existence so according to lady sadu uh, what he is saying is uh, the life span of rupa or nama is already determined by a natural law uh, so what the there is no necessity of any cause for the uh, momentary existence uh, it's uh, what the jivita is doing is protecting the following generation Uh, okay, but then, but then, if that's the case, and yeah. there might be a question, yes. Then, mm. so we know that in according to the Bhattana, then all the Kamaja Rupa is supported by the Kama Sati, right? Yeah. But if you say that the Kiwi Tendriya is to support the continuation of the generation, which means the you know the rising of the next Kalapas and so on, then what kind of Sati is that? Ah, uh, that is uh, according to Bhattana. According to Patana, this has not been explained. This has not been explained. Patana explains how uh, the Jivita Indriya is supporting the coexisting rupas only. So then, that support is given to uh, following uh, that this kalapa is giving to the following kalapa. You have to take it as an extension of the Jivita uh, uh, Pachya, Jivita Indriya Pachya, or Uh, this is a force that has not been explained within the patana because there are some for example if you think about the tejo how tejo is producing uh, utuja rupa this cannot be explained in patana it it it, it is not possible to explain because uh, there is no pachya uh, explanation how tejo is producing utuja rupa so likewise in patana some pachyas are not explained but in this case is a very special one uh, jivita indriya is supporting the remaining uh, strengthening anupar strengthening the coexisting rupas so due to this strengthening it's it protects the uh, generation so that's what seado is telling uh, if all this has to be taken according to him all this has to be taken of protecting the generation okay thank you bhante sar 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 And the, the next question is, but the, I just want to uh, make sure that I understand what you said correctly. So when you talked about the four types of tejo and six types of vayu, but the, so we ignore the asasa and basasa, so five types of vayu. You said that all of those nine types contains jivita. Namaka. Yeah. Not only jivita. Namaka. Then, then, they they contain thirty three rupas, thirty uh, three rupas. Uh, eight attamaka, eight of units, eight units of chittaja, utuja, aharaja. So it's twenty-four. Then jivita navaka has nine altogether, thirty-three rupees. Yeah. So so okay, but then you you also mentioned that for it, it within the four types of tejo, the last type, which is the type that is uh, responsible for the digestion of the food, then one only contains. Jivita yeah, yeah. Nawaka. Yes, yes, yes. So, so only that one contains Jivita, Jivita Kala uh, Nawaka, but the rest contains maybe the rupas that can be, uh, I mean, uh, are produced by four causes. Yes, right? yes, exactly, exactly. It's like uh, Tejo three contains eight, 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 nine. This is Jivita Nawaka. Then the Tejo, the fourth Tejo, fourth one, the Pach Pari Pachaka, only nine. Then Vayu, first five, contains eight, 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 nine. Then Asasa, Asasa, contains only. If this is Chitta Ja, Uttu Ja, Ahar Ja, it contains only this nine actually with Sadda, none of them. This is how it goes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Man. This is the uh, digestion one. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pandey. Sorry. 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 And the next question is, Pandey, um, are coexisting rupa, sahajata rupa, and sambhajuta rupa interchangeable in usage here? Oh no, we don't say sampayutta rupa. Sampayutta is only found in nama. Sahajata 
is possible for rupa they exist together they exist as a one you uh, arise together arise as a one unit but sampayutta to be in order to be called sampayutta it has to be it's only namas are getting sampayutta arising having the same arisen having the same arising having the same vanishing associating the same base and also cognizing the same object so in order to be sampayutta it has to have that, have that subtle nature and to be mixed with each other rupas are gross so even though they arise together vanishes together stay together we don't call them sampayutta okay thank you pante sari 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 uh, the next question is pante so jiu vita navaka is kamacha kalapa so does that mean that this karma must be the pati sandhi causing karma or can it be karma in current life also because by taking medicine one can change the digestion pachaka tejo to be more effective actually yeah so it's possible that uh, we can effect now for instance even uh, the sight eyesight can be increased and get decreased due to uh, the conditions that we associate here and there uh, so we may be able to support now for instance uh, if we look into the bhava rupas when we look into the bhava rupa explanation which i will giving most probably in this on sunday uh, not saturday saturday i have to give an introduction to bhava rupa uh, so it seems like if someone has the capacity now i'm adapting from that fundamental if someone has that capacity to have a proper digestion but it has been interrupted by some other causes even those our kamma produces good Uh, digestion like the heat it can be interrupted by uh, some other physical causes in this life therefore uh, if we put take proper medicine and so forth we can we can bring it back to its own quality its its natural quality and maybe uh, by effecting the karma by doing good karmas you can also uh, increase the uh, means uh, increase means it's normally uh, it's not easy according to the tradition what i have studied is uh, uh, the the kama which gives the birth or gives uh, arouses rupa has a certain condition uh, that quality of the effect can be covered or affected by some other condition so when you remove that that obstacles it comes into its natural natural state uh, so as you said the digestion can be uh, corrected Uh, by taking medicine so it seems like if now if the karma was very weak and it has no uh, it was it was it was not supporting a proper digestion uh, somehow you uh, somehow some would try still there will be complications in digestion because it cannot be fully corrected according to the theravada explanations but for some there was the kamma had the potency to bring good digestion but due to some other reasons it has been interrupted so when you remove that those conditions by taking medicine we can bring we can make the digestion heat proper uh, into the into the into its normal state uh, but as we said a fundamental is uh, kamma in this very life does not produce kamaja rupas and uh, does this jivita navaka is produced by patisandhi kamma there there can be two opinions yes it is or no it can be produced by other kammas as well i shall bring a discussion on this i'm not giving an answer now shall bring a discussion at the end of the kammaja rupas and and point out what are the possibilities whether it should be should arise with uh, due to the patisandhi kamma or can it be produced by some other kamma I'll, i'll leave it to the discussion but it is not according to the tradition is not it cannot be produced by kamma done in this life it has to be a kamma done in the past lives and as the question was asked yes it is possible to uh, increase the level of digestion to my understanding because uh, when we when we uh, study the bhava rupas there will be a fundamental mentioning uh, that kamma produces a effect it, uh, it is it has that effect because based on the karma you cannot uh, uh how do you call increase or 
decrease this karma this is already has been done uh, in the which has been done in the past life uh, so what happens is due to some other causes this the quality of this effect may reduce due to some factors so by supporting by removing those obstacles you can bring that quality to, to higher level if the karma was too weak and the digestion happens in this level lower level there is no possibility that you may be able to increase it because the main cause is karma according to the tradition if uh, come if digestion is only based on kamaja tejo but another thing to consider di for the digestion according to the tradition tejo is involved in digestion but it also mentioned bile phlegm some other some other elements are also necessary involved in the digestion so these elements contain uh, utuja rupas chitta rupas and so forth so it's not that entire process of digestion is due to karma it's not that entire process of digestion is due to kamaj rupas other rupas are also involved so if you look it look into the uh, medical aspect from a theravada perspective maybe you are by may taking medicine we are bringing some other utuja elements we are we are making the utuja level of utuja elements increasing the quality of utuja elements so the digestion would happen because uh, when you read the literature we find for example when when the stomach, when the food enters into the stomach uh, some other uh, liquids such as bile and so forth uh, but that's how it is referred as bile you may, may you may say it in a different word in in biology i think so some other liquids come and get mixed in the in the stomach and they are also involved in digestion heat plays a huge role kamaja uh, navaka jivita navaka plays a huge role but it's not the only cause of digestion so by taking medicine we can increase the level of utuja rupas in that uh, process and uh, increase the quality of digestion that's how i look into that so thank you for this sadu sadu um please go ahead um i don't know if it's male and female but uh, okay kitsiri okay kitsiri yes 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 please go ahead may i have your permission when we will bante yeah sure uh, today i am asking questions in english okay uh, listening to your explanation uh, i had one question regarding the death we are uh, you were explain very well uh, at birth how kamma and jeevitendriya comes into effect uh, that i understood uh, but then uh, when you uh, go through the sukta pitaka we find four different modes of death uh, or four different causes of death which are called kamma kriya ayukkhaya ubhyakkhaya and akala so what i would like to know from you is uh, how do we explain the difference between kamakkhaya ayukkhaya uh, uh, using the explanation you gave today for uh, ay ayu as jeevitin vid okay thank you for that uh ayu for jeevitindriya and ayukkhaya i'm i'm not sure whether they refer to the same meaning the terminologies uh, i i can exp I, i shall explain how to differentiate kamakkhaya and ayukkhaya kamakkhaya means now the kamma has a certain potency and it gives results it gives the life so this according to this potency so our life span how much are we going to live what is the strength of the kamma is already been determined one more thing now after doing a karma you can increase or decrease its quality within that life be by rejoicing on the karma or regretting upon the karma but it is not mentioned that you can increase the level of a karma in in the next life it's not it's not possible to to my to my knowledge in the literature uh and according to janakabhi on sayado which i've heard from one of my friends who have who are who are well fluent in burmese uh that increasing and decreasing this is something extra i'm giving information increasing and decreasing has to happen what immediately after the karma has been done 
in this uh, immediate environment or immediate uh, moments if someone regrets upon the karma after many years or re rejoice, rejoice upon the karma after many years this would affect the karma but not in a larger scale even even someone regrets upon a tihetuka kama after few years this is not going to make it omaka omaka or utkutta nature is determined by the pre uh, previously and following uh, uh, mind moments immediately in that in that scenario after it has been done for few years if you regret or rejoice upon it still it affect the karma but not to the not to change its level of superior or uh, inferior but nothing can be nothing can happen to my understanding after the life is uh, in, in another life now when someone is born due to a karma his uh, after someone has born someone is born due to a karma this uh, his lifespan is already determined by the karma which gave the rebirth right so uh, kamakaya means now they, 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 are you here refers to are you are you kappa like every human has a certain lifespan a certain lifespan for during the buddha's time it was around 100 this year this this era according to the literature it's something around 70 75 so some less than 75 uh, and it also differs according to the countries as is very very obvious to us and also depends upon the uh, hygiene and all these habits of the of the society and so forth uh, so now uh, normally generally humans have a certain lifespan so for instance think that uh, one could live for 75 years today for instance roughly so if someone dies at the age of 50 it shows that it cannot be he has not completed his lifespan but maybe his karma had only uh, had the capacity only to make him to live for 50 years so it means his karma had the capacity for 50 years so when it is exhausted when the karma is exhausted or karma has uh, yielded out its entire ability uh, the person would die that is called kamakaya ayukaya means the karma still have the potency to live for maybe for 200 years but ayu is not so ayu means now in that case what is happening his utuja body utuja body gets deteriorates due to aging due to the food and all the conditions that he is under and it is the utuja body is not, not supporting any further for the kamaja process to happen the kama is supporting the kamaja process utu, utu is not supporting so as a result the kamaja process would weaken and in the end the jivita kala, uh, kamaja kalapas which contain jivita indriya would collapse would collapse so when it is collapsing the kamma another kamma gets the opportunity to give result so kamma alone cannot live make him to live so ayukkaya means even while the kamma is still there his jivita indriya is interrupted due to the deterioration of utuja kalapas mainly Ubayakka is both are happening at the same time, very rare death. Then uh, Akala Marana can be many, many reasons. If someone dies with an accident, the same phenomenon. Utuja is distorted as a result. Kamaja processes cannot sustain. It means the Jivit Indriya is interrupted, so he dies. So in all the, in, in both the cases, by the interruption of Jivit Indriya, one dies. In the first case, Kamakkaya. The Kama is not able to produce the Jivit Indriya any further, is unable to, unable to produce Jivit Indriya any further. And since another, another factor is, uh, it doesn't mean that the Kamakaya persons would die uh, without any sickness or naturally. When the Kama is getting weaker, there is also, uh, as, as the phenomenon of aging, sometimes the Utuja processes are also deteriorating and he may get sickness and that that can also cause for his death while the kamma is exhausted so it's a very complicated thing to say how his death exactly happened because it's not one cause which is determining so as to your question ayukkaya means the lifespan lifespan is to my understanding lifespan is the normal age age period uh, years that a person would live in a certain era here ayu means 
the rupa that facilitates the continuation of jivita or uh, continuous kamaja kalapas. Uh, thank you very much and may, much merits to you, Swami Nansa. Uh, huh? We worship you uh, as always. Okay, uh, sana, sana. Teruan sana. Teruan sana. Thank you, Pante, Sari, Sari, Sari. And the next one is, I think it's more like a request. So can we get the commentary for detailed study and more knowledge? That is, I guess, that is a request. What does that request <laughs> mean? That's the problem I have. Yes, yeah. Can we get the commentary for detailed study and more knowledge? I think someone is referring to the English translation, right? Is it? I'm not sure. Maybe. But they <laughs> because the commentaries can be found in the internet, right? It is it is yeah. it is capable it's possible to find the commentaries in Chatta Sangayana. Uh, if you refer to the how do you uh, what is the app, Doctor Ryan? Do you remember? Ch where you can oh, find the you mean, uh, uh, yes, it's the um, Pali digital reader, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So Pali digital yeah. digital Pali reader. Uh, digital Pali reader, right? Digital yes. Pali reader, but it is in Pali actually. It's in Pali. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have all the commentaries translated into English. So that's a task that we have to take, uh, initiate one day or another. The scholars have to do it. Uh, you can read the commentary in Pali, uh, and you should, uh, if you don't have the proper English, uh, Pali knowledge, it would, be, it would be a very difficult task. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to explain this in English as much as possible. Uh, so you can refer to Pali commentaries here, and I have given you the footnotes and the references uh, based on the Myanmar. So in the Pali digital part reading, you have uh, PTS numbering, Myanmar page numbers. I'm referring to the Myanmar page numbers in in the digital Pali reader, uh, and also. Uh, Chatta Sangha. Uh, actually, uh, my reference was Chatta Sangha, you know? I think it's the same, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Chatta Sangha, you know? Gayana version. Uh, BRI, right? Vipassana Research Center, BRI. Yes, yes. Yeah. BRI. BRI. So, this is the uh, online things that we can get. Unfortunately, we don't have the commentaries translated into English. But for your further studies, I can recommend you some books. That is, uh, I, I prefer if you can, Dr. Ryan can uh, share it in the uh, Zoom chat if possible. Uh, comprehensive Manual of Abhidhamma by Bhikkhu Bodhi. Another good book is Abhidhamma in Daily Life by Ashin Janaka Bhivansha. Then we have Manual of Buddhism by Lady Seado. These are very uh, nice books to read. Do you have any suggestions, like any Abhidhamma books anymore? Yeah, I think that should yeah. be, yeah, that yeah. Should yeah. cover Yeah, that should cover, right? Abhidhamma in Daily Life is a very practical book you can read. I think it's possible to get downloaded from the internet, right? Get it downloaded. Yes, yes. Yeah, Comprehensive Manual of Abhidhamma by Bhikkhu Bodhi, a very comprehensive book and Manual of Buddhism by Lady Seado. It covers many topics and which, is, which has been written in very simple English, translated into English, which also would give you a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Pandit Sadi, okay. Sadi, Sadi. And then Pandit, the next question is, um, it's, it's a pretty small short question. Okay, right. So, can we say that the virus and bacteria in our bodies, including coronavirus, have Jivita Rupa? or they have just merely Utuja Rupa. 
is another tough question. Uh, to my understanding, even according to science, virus is not a living thing. It's, it's in between living and non-living. It seems most probably uh, viruses are not living things. They should be utuja. But for the bacteria, for the bacteria, they they may divide into two. One may divide into two and become two beans. For example, uh, there is a uh, now when Lady Sayadaw was explaining why the trees doesn't have life, his example, his simil his uh, argument was, you can cut apart some some trees. You can take some parts of the trees and you can plant it and it would start to grow and it would become a completely separate tree. So what he is suggesting is our body parts cannot be grown like that. Our body parts would not come into uh, to become would become an independent organism. So therefore uh, if uh, some if some, some part is taken from a certain organism and it develops into a complete different organism this is not living according to him. But there are contradicting evidences. We know there is a, there is a one being, living being in the entire world, as far as I know, if you, even you, not the bacterial level. You cut it, that being after some time, I forgot its name, it starts to grow into a completely new living being and it even reproduces. So if someone asks what is happening according to Buddhism, maybe some sort of a consciousness is occurring in there. It, it takes some time, I think, uh, as I remember, to, for it to grow. Uh, and then it becomes a full-fledged be being. Uh, so according to that argument, so this uh, Lady Seattle's argument contradicts with the modern findings that we have today. Uh, and so if you go with the Lady Seattle's exp explanation, since bacteria are, uh, one bacteria can come into two beans, so likewise it can multiply, uh, it's similar to trees. It's similar to trees. Uh, so uh, then, because according to the living beings, we are born in the mother's womb, new Kamaja Rupa is arising, depending on, and also it gets some Utuja Rupas from the mother's body, and then we grow into a different uh, organism. So the vital point is, Kamma is uh, acting, a new Kamma is acting for us to be a new being. So, so this still leaves the doubt whether bacteria, now one bacteria is becoming two, uh, according to what the Seado is saying, this cannot be a living being, but the evidence has shown that some be one side of a being is there, that even you cut it into two pieces, it may grow into two different individual beings. So likewise, and also according to the biology, uh, our cells embroil, uh, which started with a uh, sperm and egg connected, uh, combined each other, would multiply in become a big, our organism according to Buddhism Kama is effect in this causing Kama Jarupas to happen. So I'm not able to give you a direct exact answer whether it's living being or not. It has both the evidences supports. Uh, sometimes it may seem like not, not a living being but uh, I cannot exactly guarantee that because uh, there are evidences of beings coming into two parts and starts to live as independent organisms so yeah that's 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 not a satisfactory answer maybe that's what i have to uh, offer thank you Bande, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. and the next question is Bande, yeah is it true is is it true to say that if an illness cannot be cured by any means then we can say that it is caused by karma uh, yeah, there's, an, there's a statement. I shall come into this topic at the end of the Kamaja Rupas. Uh, this, uh, no, at the end of all the Rupas, I, I shall take a topic called sickness, a separate lecture. So in that lecture, we find a fundamental, which, which I have already written, uh, I'll distribute it later. Uh, sickness, other, uh, sickness caused by karma cannot be cured by medicine or by any other protective means such as paritta and so forth or any, any, any spiritual inf, uh, inter interruption, any spiritual involvement. Uh, but there is a story of the sister of uh, Venerable Anuruddha who was known as Rohini. Rohini. You can look into this story in Dhammapada Attakata. Rohini. She had a sickness caused by a past karma. 
she her body the entire body got uh, bubbles and all uh, because she 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 did a, a being a queen she uh, being jealous to another lady who was attracted to the king uh, she caused her some suffering to her skin uh, so as a result she got a sickness venerable anuruddha saw what was the reason and he asked her to do duties to the sangha veya vacha use your body like if, uh, make your body to uh, like like put some effort or use in the body do some cleaning and these chores uh, so as she keep kept on doing for a long period serving the sangha her sickness disappeared and she also was involved in building a dana sala dining hall so this story shows that even the uh, sickness caused by karma can be cured by bringing different means by bringing different uh, causes uh, so and also uh, there was a, the buddha also had a sickness during the belu village which was very serious which would have killed him so he entered into pala samapatti a special pala samapatti which i shall be discussing in the rupa chapter also uh, and the chitta jrupas jivita sankhara tapana pala samapatti it's not an ordinary pala samapatti so due to this pala samapatti his body completely was affected by this chitta jrupas and he could suppress his sickness and it arose back at the during the last day after he ate the food given by chunda sukramadva uh, so he was able to suppress it for a longer period so it seems uh, sometimes karma karma ja sickness caused by karma can be interrupted by some other means but there is a statement in the commentary i have to admit that uh, sickness caused by karma cannot be cured by medicine or paritta and so forth spiritual means and so forth so we can have a discussion on discussion on this when we come to the topic called sickness okay thank you pante sari 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 yes that's the all the questions okay thank you. Thank okay you so right yeah it was very nice and thank you for the questions thank you for listening uh, so i will conclude the today's lecture today was about jivita indriya which was a very interesting topic uh, so it shows that our life is Uh, depending on many causes and it would hope it would help you help to increase your vipassana understanding so this merit may this merit helps us to attain the nirvana the final bliss and also for the sustaining of the buddha sasana and also may peace prevail in the world and unnecessary human life how human deaths would be stopped immediately buddha sasana chiran tithatu buddha sasana chiran tithatu बुद्ध शासना चिरा तिथत साधु साधु साधु